Afternoon all. A very entertaining game has been brought to my attention indirectly via the ECF forum. Uh, it is an exciting king chase actually featured in this game. And I know uh, the Natalia Pogonina game went down well with the king chase recently. So let's have a look at this one. In the British Championship in round 10, Jack Rand, who's an international master, was playing Nicholas Walker, who's a 2179 player. Jack Rudd's 2295 at the moment. It kicked off with e4. Then we saw a French defence. And actually, after d4, d5, we saw the Tarash variation, knight d2. After Siegbert Tarash, uh, who had many uh, different views to Aaron Nimsbich, they kind of had ideological chess wars between each other, some fierce rival rivalry conceptually. But Tarash uh, liked this move against the French defence. Now bishop e7 has been rising and rising I think in popularity and it used to be my pet system but I think I'm going to have to change away from this in the next season um, but uh, it's just it's just so well documented now. White plays now knight gf3 after knight f6 bishop d3 so maintaining that central tension not being tempted for e5 just yet. Now after c5 in this position actually e5 is played and it's with a very interesting idea indeed of the knight fd7. The move here is c4. It's a surprising move, which I have played myself in slightly different uh, variations. Um, it's undermining really black's center pawns, but it's losing that d4 pawn. That d4 pawn is taken, and without any chain recharge at all, white's just hitting into the d5 pawn takes on d5 okay and now a pawn down okay after castles knight c5 and now knight b3 offering actually the light square bishop so is there a method to this madness will white get d4 back after after losing the light square bishop black for the moment is not so keen to play knight takes d3 here though he just pins this knight bishop g4 and now the light square bishop, given this reprieve, actually makes use of itself to throw in this check. And after knight c6, regaining the pawn with queen takes d4. And actually we have frontal pressure on d5. We have a full care on c5 and g4. Okay. Now in this position, it's it's already quite interesting because what is actually going on here? What could black do? For example, knight takes b3, hits the rook. Queen g4, can you just take the rook? I think we need a bit of engine analysis here to see what is going on. Knight takes b3. So let's imagine queen takes g4. Let's test this. Knight takes a1. Queen takes g7. Rook f8. Bishop h6. And what's the threat? You might ask, knight c7 getting the knight back, queen takes h7 hitting the rook, say the knight crawls back, e6 and apparently okay engines like this position, <laughs> after f takes knight e5 it's dangerous for black, it's starting to emerge as a clear advantage for white, it seems to be a very da dangerous position with the king stuck in the center, uh, this rook's out of the game, queen g6 looks pretty menacing. So this line looks very, very dangerous. In fact, it looks very close to winning for white. So is that the grand concept already? If we go back all the way here, queen takes d4 with this idea of queen g4, queen g7. Amazing if it is. Uh, but black bypassed all of this. Black played bishop takes f3. And now, um, OK, instead of taking on f3, denting the pawn structure, White plays knight takes c5, and there seems to be now a threat of knight takes b7, for example, which would undermine c6, pin to the king at the moment. Black counters with queen b6, not only protecting against b7, but also c5 is a bit loose here. Okay, so bishop takes c6 is played, queen takes, and now the c5 knight is reinforced with bishop e3. In this position, black really didn't fancy perhaps bishop c5. It would end up, I think, probably significantly better for white, that scenario. Let's have a quick look in this position. Bishop takes c5. Queen takes. 
queen takes, bishop takes. Bishop stopping black castling, that might not be such a big deal. It's opposite colour bishops. Actually, this this might be turnable for black. Okay. Three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, equal on pawns, opposite colour bishops, it's about equal to be honest. But in the game, it seems actually Queen G6 is also the preferred move of engines here, not not just taking on C5. Keeps the complexity going of the game. It threatens mate. It seems a lucrative move in its own right to threaten Queen takes G2 mate here. G3 causing light square weaknesses. If only the Queen could get to H3. So it plays Queen H5. It doesn't seem that far away. Nothing can interrupt it. Bishops on H4. Is the Queen going to go to H3? Can White play H4 to slow it down though? For the moment, Queen A4 check is played. And in the game, slightly inferior move, perhaps best was King F8, let's turn this off. Slightly inferior move, B5. Maybe the idea was to distract uh, the Queen, if needed, onto a slightly inferior square. Uh, but King King F8 is also, it seems, it seems a plausible uh, move. Still maintaining some threat. Anyway, so B5. We saw Queen takes b5, King f8. And okay, we're in a very dangerous position here as white. What does Jack do in this position against Queen h3? It would seem to be causing uh, a major panic potentially, this Queen h3. And I don't know what you would play here, but if I give you 10 seconds, what do you think Jack Rudd played here? Quite remarkable little move already in this position. I'll give you 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, he plays actually e6. It seems to positively invite queen h3 but there's a just-in-time defense. Threatening, threatening mate, I think check, not go, wanting to go into the uh, discovered checks here, because knight e5 would win the bishop. Now e takes is actually forcing this position, and then the bishop's lost, and then it's the end of attack. Black's just lost the piece from this check. So that's a classy way of steering away from the mate threat with e6. And of course, bishop c5 is check. Unfortunately, it's with check, and that would give uh, White the opportunity to wreak havoc, perhaps. So what Black does here. He's playing f6. And in this position, against queen h3, white plays now h4, causing the queen to have to spend another move if it wants to get to h3 as a destination. Uh, there might be something severely wrong though with queen g4 here. In the game, actually, g5 was played. Let's have a look here. Is actually something wrong with queen g4? In this position, Queen G4 has actually given us one of the better moves. Maybe slightly equal, actually. Maybe even equal. Okay, so what is going on? Bishop King H2 to stop Queen H3 with the King. Bishop D6 now threatens Queen H4. Technical move. Queen A4 hanging on with a friend. The Knight's protecting the Queen. The Queen's now protecting H4. And Black should be okay in this position. So maybe a missed opportunity there. For the simple and strong Queen G4, instead G5, and we have a very interesting situation now again, off the G5, and it seems there's an opportunity for White to get advantage. He plays actually check. The King doesn't want to go to E8. It'd be Knight F6, double check, winning the Queen. Goes to G7. That was the idea, the principal idea, to vacate G7. Now, in this position. The move bishop d4 is played. Intriguing. It looks as though white's really playing on thin ice indeed in this game. Why now isn't queen g4 effective? Or even potentially g takes h. Well, let's see the game continuation, which was queen g4. Now, remarkably, I mean, this seems like a Houdini escape act. Um, <laughs> where, okay, White has got very limited uh, options here. 
and it seems that um, actually d4s and pre as well. So if king h2, maybe just queen takes d4 is on the cards. Guess what Jack Rudd played in this position? If I give you 10 seconds, starting from now. Okay. He plays bishop takes f6. What on earth does bishop f6 do, you may ask? And what are the range of options now on the board? Is black cons compelled to take on f6? Can he move the king? Well, maybe king g6 does raise the possibility of a check. Or king g8. Maybe king h4. Uh, maybe king h2 is possible, and the bishop's also reinforcing h4. So black was keen to take that bishop. In this position, a quiet move, uh, seemingly quite dangerous though, is played. I wonder if you can guess this one. If I give you 10 seconds, starting from now. Okay, queen b7. Now you might ask, does this really hold up against Queen H3? Really? Is White really holding this by a thread against Queen H3? In the game, the king got out of the way of this discovered check. If we have a look at uh, Queen H3 just briefly, instead of King H6, let's see, does it get torn apart, Queen H3? There's also some other moves to look at, like Queen E6. Knight F6 check. Now if King takes, apparently it's a mate in uh, 13. If King G6, then there's Queen F7 check. And it starts to get nasty. And it starts to look a bit like the game. So, okay, let's assume that this isn't possible, Queen H3. Apparently, one of the better moves might have been Queen H5. In the game, King H6 was played, and it seems the advantage, miraculously, is now with White after the Knight takes F6. So, what is going on here? Well, the game continuation finally shows up Queen H3 being tested, and then we see HG forcing move. Now, if King G6, we've got things like Queen F7. The King actually takes on G5, and we have Queen G7 check now. So white is one move away from being mated here. The king now goes to f5. Wow. And also, added to this, not just g2 is friend, but h1. And also, black might use this g file if white is not careful. In this position, he plays now g4 check. OK, the king really doesn't want to go to e5 in this case, in this scenario looks pretty dangerous after like a move like check on e1 but there might be an even more incisive idea if king e5 let's just check this one out rook fe1 check apparently is okay and it's a forced mate in six so say king d4 knight e4 check let's go with check queen c7 check the king's getting mated basically Of all sorts. So bishop takes g4. Unfortunately for white, white is forced to use the bishop to c uh, come off his mating threat. He plays bishop takes g4. And then we see knight d7 with a huge threat now. Queen e5. First thing, mate in one. Okay. Now black makes way for the g4 square, he plays actually bishop e2, which not only gives the king g4 on queen e5, but also implies rook g8 would be pretty pretty tasty. So, white has to tread very carefully, he plays a check, the king now goes to uh, g4 here, no, white had not played queen e5 check, he played actually queen f6. So either e4 or g4 were options now. He goes to g4. And in this position, okay, it gets a little bit tricky still. 
Why it plays now? F free check and black puts the king on h5 and it's still an incredibly dangerous position if rook g8 is played that's the end of white's king potentially or maybe just a perpetual check and stuff in this position uh, queen g3 is actually prevented with this move queen g7 and also there's knight f6 if rook g8 is played so queen g g7 protects against queen g3 black plays now bishop takes f6 and now we get to see more of a king chase for the black king unfortunately for black with knight f6 check king h4 queen h6 check king g3 you couldn't make this up. You couldn't make this game up, really. Queen g5 check. King takes f3. Rook takes f1, and that's the end of the game. So black was so close yet so far at the same time with his mating intentions on the light squares. Well, okay, there are there are a labyrinth of variations and possible uh Fences, and there were some chances it seems for black to have technically uh, technically equalized let's just do an overview and summary of this game though though and just appreciate it for its uh, entertaining value of the king hunt <laughs> the unexpected king hunt really so knight b3 like not interested in knight square bishop just pins here and now we see check and queen takes d4 we see bishop takes f3 and white playing knight takes c5. We see queen b6 and now taking on c6. Playing bishop e3 in black. Could have gone into an endgame potentially here, opposite color bishops. But was uh, understandably, it was seemed lucrative to go for this uh, queen g6. It does prompt light square weaknesses. Why not? In general, this generally uh, statistically kind of wins this idea usually. Queen h5, and then we saw Queen a4 check. So in retrospect, better perhaps is King of 8, and it might be more difficult uh, for White to have so much fun as the game. But uh, we saw b5, and remarkable e6 rid its head for the first amazing defensive idea of knight d7, ef and knight e5 coming to the rescue if black dared play queen h3. h4, another defense put in the, in the way. g5, maybe queen g4 was best here. And uh, we get some interesting variations if queen g4 was played. But no, g5 looks as though it's also got this added bonus of the g file. Check. Bishop d4. Remarkable idea with no panic, just bishop d4. Just slightly weakening Black's king for the seventh row idea. Discovery of check here. Which again seems to save white. King tries to get out of the way, but uh, to no avail in the end. It gets chased down. Menacing threats the black king hope you enjoyed it comments or questions on youtube thanks very much